Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to start some basic mixing in Pro Tools. So we're going to focus on the mix window and we're mainly going to talk about a very basic idea of how inserts and sends work and then a few of the other options that happen on tracks in the mix window like input and output and volume faders and things like that. But the main thing is trying to understand how sends and inserts work in a really basic way. All right, so we're gonna have a look at the mix window a little bit. Now, if you're started in the edit window or maybe you can't find your mix window, there's an easy way to get there. So you can either go to window and then mix or command equals. And that will flip flop between the mix and edit windows. So we're gonna spend most of our time in the mix window today. First, let's just review the sections of the mix window. So the top chunk here of five kind of little buttons that, uh, that uh, allow some drop downs to show up. These are the inserts and there are actually more than just five here. There are actually 10. So if you don't see or need more, you can go to view and then mix window views and then you'll see inserts A through E and then inserts F through J. So if I click F through J, now I have 10 inserts available and it works exactly the same way for sends. So sends gives you A through E, and then if you want, F through J. Pretty rare that you need that many, but they're there if you need them. So I'm gonna get rid of F through J for both my sends and my inserts. Okay, so an insert or a channel insert is an audio patch point that allows some kind of processing to happen directly on the signal of the audio channel. So this has drums in it, and right now you'll see Smack, which is a compressor, is currently on that drum track. So if we solo that, you'll notice that this is processing the drums. So we're just listening to drums now. And let's bypass that and see if we hear much of a difference. Yeah, you hear that the, the snare drum is a lot more dynamic, so this will help push that down a little bit. It's a little too much, so... Cool, so inserts allow us to insert either software plugins or hardware plugins. So if you want hardware, then you need to choose uh, I.O. and then pick an insert. So that will allow you to plug in uh, some sort of outboard processing as well. So either software or hardware in inserts can be inserted into the signal on a certain track. Sends allow for parallel processing. So I can send out the signal from this track onto another track or out to hardware, and that will uh, allow it to be processed and then returned to the audio stream, basically to your output, having been processed already. For instance, a send will be a reverb or a delay. A lot of time-based things, you don't want to use too many inserts because you're making copies of the same process and that uses up system resources. So instead, what you often do is you place a single reverb somewhere, right? Like for instance, this verb aux input has a single reverb here and anyone who needs reverb, which is currently just the vocals, any other track that you want to send to that reverb, you only have to process it once, and then the aux track returns it to our output. So what you're actually getting is a clean signal here, and then you're sending some of the signal over to the reverb aux input, and some of the reverbed output is coming out into our uh, audio stream uh, as well. So you can hear that. Here, I'm gonna solo the vocal track, and we can see if I click on the, the send, there's some send of the vocal track going out to the verb aux input. Tonight comes and I wanna run away. So that's the dry signal of the vocal, and then we can add in we're hearing, so it's sending off to the reverb right now, but we're not hearing any of it yet because that track isn't soloed or solo safed. 
Tonight comes and I want to run away. Hear how it's dry now. And then here comes our reverb again. I can overdo it just so you hear it. From my heart into. So what we're mixing is a dry signal and the reverb signal at the same time. So that's parallel processing. We're sending out some signal you can think of through the bottom of this track. Out, Really, it's going out our, our monitors, one and two. And then you're also sending some of that signal over here to be processed with reverb. And that's also coming out our monitors, our output, one and two. So you're mixing the signal. You've got two basically streams of audio signal. Think of it like water. And this is the cold signal coming out, and this is the processed warmer signal uh, coming out here. And both of them together make for a really nice sound. So you're getting both signals at once. Now, one of the things that happens with sends is that as we uh, change the volume of the track itself, you have a choice about whether the volume change here also affects the volume of the signal going over to wherever the processing has happened. So uh, there's a couple of choices. We're going to learn how to turn that on and off. But for now, we're just going to stick with the default, which is post fader, which means if I change this fader of the vocal, the signal going out to the reverb is also going to be moved up and down equally. So it won't the ratio of the reverb to the dry signal doesn't change because it's actually getting sent out after this fader. You can also set it to pre fader, which means it will get its own amount of signal and that will never change even if you change the amount of the dry signal that you're hearing. But typically what you want and the reason it's the default is because this if you up the volume on the vocal track, it should also get more signal over to the reverb so that the amount of reverb is equal. And we'll go into that in far more detail later. But just so you know, you have pre-fader and post-fader sends, which means you can choose whether the amount of volume coming out of this fader is actually affecting your sent signal or not. Cool, so we know that we have inputs and output paths on our tracks as well. So the input you don't really need unless you're actually recording in. And then when you do choose something, you can have the input be something from your interface and you can also have software inputs go in there. But typically you're plugging your guitar, or your vocal into the input and choosing wherever that is on your interface, which will be showing up in your input uh, selector. And then your output, notice almost all of these, actually all of these are going out uh, one, two, right? So that's our main audio output on our interface. It's our hardware output. So that's so that we can hear it through our monitor speakers. So typically those are almost always set to your main outputs. And then these, unless you're recording, don't really matter as much. Then this is the volume coming out of our output. So if we are playing back a track and trying to adjust volumes for our final mix, these are the faders that we're mostly going to play with. These are also the pan knobs for left and right uh, for the same reason, right? What's coming out the output. So if I play back. Tonight come And I drop the vocal. And I just the music. And then we can bring the vocal back in. Miles. Cool, so those volume faders are for adjusting the output volume. Okay, so hopefully we're starting to get a sense of how inserts and sends work and how input and output works. Uh, and we'll do more in the next video. So I will see you there.